Another opportunity to have the Get to Know You series kick off tonight, and we have Miss Jill here with us, and it is going to be a very fantastic night. We're very excited about it. We've been praying about it and definitely feel like God is leading us um, just to have this conversation. We know that Jill has a lot to say and has a lot to just share, and we know that God is really moving in her heart and in her life. And so with that being said, we're going to be just go straight into it. Uh, Jill, let us just tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are and how you got involved at Abundant Life. Only got a half hour, right? Okay. Um, well, I'm like a lot of people. I'm a transplant to Springfield. I was born and raised in Central Illinois. Um, I was raised in the church. My uh, parents literally went to church, you know, their entire, well, I can't say their entire, my mother, her entire life, my father, his entire adult life. Um, he he was very, very involved with uh, the church, whatever church we were at. We, we were at one of two churches. The church my mother grew up in, which was literally a very small country church in the middle of nowhere, middle of a cornfield, actually, and um, or the small church in our in the town I grew up in. And um, so I grew up always believing. Never had, never had a relationship as I was younger, but I was, you know, believing God. You know, you wake up, you breathe, you brush your teeth, you believe in God. That's literally how it is. When, um, as I got older and was a teenager, it just, I had the opportunity to not attend church when I was 13. My parents gave all of us kids that option. Not, you know, you're 13, you make the decision. I didn't go to church for maybe six months, and then I'm like, yeah, this isn't right. I need to get back in. So I went back in church, got baptized. Um, I grew up series of events, began dating a young man who was in medical school, medical school with um, Pastor Dr. John, and he, um, again, living in Central Illinois, met him, decided, well, you know, this was a relationship we we're going to pursue, so I moved to Columbia, um, found a roommate, and started going to um, Pastor John and Krista's, what was a Bible study, Bible study group. Basically, it was what we call now like a house church, we called it covenant groups, so I um, became very involved with Abundant, but up in Columbia, and did that for two years. In the course of those two years, um, made some wise decisions and some not-so-wise decisions. And during the not-so-wise decisions, that's when God really started becoming real to me. And, and he began breaking me, began taking away those things in my life that weren't of him. Um, he protected me. Oh, my gosh. Okay, clean next time. Sorry. It didn't take long. <laughs> um, he protected me from so many things. And the one scripture that he kept bringing back to me was Romans 12, 2, about do not be conformed, you know, by the ways of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so that's what he started doing. He started working on my mind, started working on my heart, um, focusing on him instead of those things around me, which I thought was necessary. So the relationship with the with the a uh, young man in, ended, I guess he's older than me, so he'd be an old man now, um, that ended, but the relationship I had with Pastor John and Krista, you know, maintained, it stayed. And when um, Pastor John graduated from medical school and everyone, we kind of did like a mass exodus out of, out of Columbia. Um, basically, we all piled our stuff into one moving van, and a lot of us just moved up here all at once. Um, at that point, that's when I started, you know, in the church here, you know, in Springfield. Um, we were still doing the small groups called covenant groups um, and, you know, got married, you know, did, did kind of the steps of life, got married, uh, took a step I didn't want to take, got divorced. Through that, I became a very, very bitter, I don't know, can you see me, very bitter, very angry kind of person. You know, and I was not a nice person to be around. And um, my best friend, she goes, she basically called me on it. She said, you're very, very bitter. Um, you think you're saying, you know, smart, clever things, but you aren't. You know, basically, I, ca I call them zingers because, you know, 
that's a very hurtful time in life. But through that time, God showed me how to walk in his joy, to be um, basically content where you're at. Not, not saying don't have goals, not saying, you know, don't strive for something better, but be content where you're at. And I think that's, I think in Philippians or something like that. And that's, that's where I made my biggest growth. And I became um, a total turnaround from being a very, very angry, bitter person to being very positive and learning to enjoy and take pleasure and take joy out of other people's pleasures and other people's joys. I used to sit in the church, and when we would have baby dedications, I would very much hurt my heart. I want a baby. I want to have a family. And instead of doing that, I'm like, oh, isn't that wonderful? They are so blessed. That is so nice. That is so wonderful. And, um, you know, people getting married because I was divorced. I don't want to be married, but I was divorced. And so that became more and more a part of my life. Um, I was the assistant to the wedding coordinator at that time. And it started just doing flowers, and then it became, you know, decorating for the for this, for that, for, you know. I became more and more a part of the whole thing. And when we moved to this building, she retired, and they asked me to be a wedding coordinator. So here I was, a woman who really, really wanted to be married, really wanted a family. And I wasn't having I mean, it wasn't me. So, um, and that was okay, because I learned that other people's joy could be my joy. And I found a lot of fulfillment in that. And plus, I'm a really organized person, so weddings were no problem. Um, and in the course of time, um, I met my husband, my second husband, and um, we call him version 2.0. And, <laughs> and whereas I'm a person that's half, you know, glass half full, he's a person who's glass half empty. And that's okay, because through that relationship, um, I became a mom. You know, I got two boys and no stretch marks. Um, so, <laughs> but through my relationship with my sons, God really showed me how to love unconditionally and know that no matter what they do, and they do some pretty interesting, strange things at times, I'm still going to love them <laughs> and they're still going to know that I love them. And it's, it's kind of funny because I heard one of them say, and this was years ago, why are you so angry? I guess I was going through an angry time, whatever. And I'm like, that made me really stick, take a step back and go, I need to fix how I relate to them. So most recently, how that came around was my youngest one looked at me and goes, you're never mad. I've never seen you mad. I'm like, what? You told me years ago that I was an angry one all the time. What? Short memory or whatever. Um, but it's, I've always considered... Since I've gotten saved, I've always considered, you know, you've always heard God is a God of, you know, of love. And, you know, God is a God of acceptance. That's where he is for me. He's a, he's a God of acceptance. He's taught me through my relationship with him how to see someone differently, see, you know, what they're living their life. It's, it may not be the right thing, but they're living their life. And God still loves them. Why can't I? You know, that's, that's helped me so much with my family because I have members of my family who aren't in the church, who aren't believers, agnostics or atheists or living alternative, whatever, but I still love them, you know, and with, with everything going on, um, I've never lived since in my adult life, I've never lived locally with my parents or with my siblings. So we've always had technology to correspond, to interact with each other. And so that really hasn't changed with the pandemic. We just reach out more. You know, it's like um, most recently I found out my brother uh, went through a second round of COVID. The first round was very hard on him. Um, and that was before COVID was even known. He had it. It was like in February. This last time he went through it, it wasn't as bad. Nothing. So I was very, I was, you know, I was praying for him. I didn't want it to get bad because he works in a nursing home in Florida ding and ding. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's serving them and he's doing his job and, you know, he got ill because of it, but he recovered this time so much more faster, but that really sparked even more of communication with him. So, um, did I talk long enough? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you can talk more. Okay. Um, no, you hit so many good points definitely. And 
it's really encouraging for me personally to hear you share your story because uh, growing up, I was part of multiple blended families as parents got divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried. And, and so it's just a hard thing to be a part of. Um, whether you're the adult or the child, it's very challenging as you're blending lives. And so uh, it's very encouraging to hear you share that because um, for each person, I think, in, in any situation where there's that blended family, they're going to have their own challenges. And oh, yeah. so God just really restored you through mm-hmm. that in a way that maybe you never even saw coming. No, definitely, because my parents were married over 60 years before my mother wow. passed. I mean, you don't see that very often. Um, it's... It's shown me how to love even more. I grew up in a family with two adopted children, and I was the huge surprise at the end. So I grew up knowing that a child does not have to come from your body to love them as your own. It doesn't. And so when I got married and I had, you know, these two young ones, when when my husband and I started dating, our youngest was two, and our oldest um, was just about ready to turn four. They're now 14 and 16. So they went from being, you know, belly button height to taller than me. Um, but I consider them just like I gave birth to them, you know. And that's, but that's something I learned from my Heavenly Father and from my earthly parents. Because there was never a difference with my family growing up, with my brother and sister being adopted and me being um, the, <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'm pregnant, but we just adopted a kid. I mean, literally, there's like eight months between my brother and I. My mom said it was like raising twins. So it's, you know, my boys have been a huge blessing, and they have, they've been everything I've wanted without the diapers because they were two and four. So um, in in the process of that relationship, that made, that made a a further relationship, one I wasn't expecting with their mother, my husband's ex-wife. You know, because of their relationship, you know, it was very hard at the beginning when we were dating, and, you know, everyone had these preconceived mo- notions of how the family should be. Yeah. And so it took it took a l- several months, a couple years, in order for, you know, us to learn how to relate to each other and to learn how to get along. But now, I mean, I consider her a, you know, a friend. When we're, we're with each other, we hug each other, we tell each other we love each other, we exchange wow. gifts at Christmas and at Mother's Day. Wow. So... She's she's a huge blessing, you know. We wow. neither one of us are perfect. Neither one of us know exactly what to do all the time. And the challenges that we had, you know, when we were, they were toddlers, is different than you know elementary school, grade school. And I don't know if we're going to survive high school, but we're trying. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, she is a big blessing to my life. Yeah. You know, and it's I would not know how to love that. I would not know how to be able to love that if I didn't have that relationship with God showing me how to love others. And, you know, and his unconditional forgiveness is the kind of, is the forgiveness I try to extend towards, you know, my family, (laughs) my husband, you know, and my kids. I can get so, I can't say angry, upset, you know, frustrated. We'll say frustrated. Sounds better than angry, doesn't it? Frustrated is better. You can get frustrated at someone you love, but you always forgive them. Absolutely. And you, something I've learned this time around is how to humble yourself and how to say, you know what, you really ticked me off, but I'm still going to love you. Right. And we're still going to be together. And let's learn from this instead of yeah. holding it against that person. Yeah. And that works in marriage, but that works in, you know, relationships. Yeah. I have had... Um, the blessing of so many relationships in this body. It's, it's like I was telling Jamie before. It's like, yeah, I've been in this church longer than y'all been alive. <laughs> um, but those relationships, you know, they've been there that long too. How I came into the body was through the covenant groups, which are now house churches. I'm in the house church with the same people I was in covenant group when I was in my 20s. Now, we're all definitely further along in life. Um you know, I've got kids that are still in school now. These, these, you know, they've got kids that have graduated. They're having, I've done some of their kids' weddings. So it's kind of, you know, it's the full circle. Yeah. You know, some are still here, some aren't. But even the people that aren't still here in, at Abundant 
I still have relationship with them. We still go to lunch. You know, we still do things together. And it's that acceptance of them and where they're at. God accepts you where you're at. He starts where you're at. He continues where you're at, too. You don't have to be perfect. I wish I was. I try to be. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's there is such a blessing in knowing that you're okay. You're good. Still love you. That's amazing, and I think, honestly, if we left right now, I think in the end of this video, everyone would be like, whoo, I'm filled for the night, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that is so good, but uh, Jill, I want to just say what a incredible story you have and what you're sharing, and I know there's, I mean, this really hits home for me, too, because, like, I, okay, my family... They, we never had, like, a divorce or anything, but I married into a family who went through that, and that was such a new experience for me, and I'm still walking through Jamie every single day on what it looks like to grow from that moment and continue to grow from that moment, and and walking with her parents on top of that and learning and growing, but what encourages me is that there is always opportunity to have victory no matter the circumstance. And that is something I'm hearing you say, and that is such a, just an impactful thing to say, and so, something I'm taking very hard, and I'm like, wow, that was so good. And I hope that speaks out to people who feel lost, who feel like they have nowhere else to go, or like, I'm hitting rock bottom, or like, no, like, take, uh, take this opportunity, take hold of yourself, pursue, 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 like God pursues you. Yes. And that is such a, oh man, I just, that gave me goosebumps just hearing that, you know, and I think that there are so many people in this world today, like it's just so more, so much more common nowadays where people are just feeling so lonely, people who are just like in the dumps and they don't know what to do. And, and I think just your testimony shows so much light to people in the eye on the eyes of saying no there's more to come there's so much more to come and like like you're saying how you wanted to wanted to be a mother or, or be a wife and you're getting it you're getting it pushed into these things are like it's like you're teasing me here you know what i'm saying like you're <laughs> teasing me putting these putting these opportunities but really it sounds like god was preparing you you yeah, know yeah it's actually it was kind of funny because the um i had i'd moved to a one-bedroom apartment and I was, I was so involved with everything in the church and, you know, doing weddings. And it's, it's literally on a Saturday, I was taking care of my best friend's four kids because they were out of town. I had thrown, I was throwing a baby shower with Pastor Holly for someone. And I, I distinctly remember saying at that baby shower, I have no idea if I would even have time for a relationship right now. My life is so full I, you know, I just honestly, I don't know how God would do it because I just don't think I would have time. I've got, I've got so much going on and everything. I just so, you know, I love everything. I'm so happy with everything. Next day I met my husband. Wow. Yeah. And I, and I had, I had three of the four kids with me. Um, I took him to the, our, the pool of the apartment that I lived at and he would lived at the same apartment complex. And um, I had seen him like about a month or so before. And I looked at him and I said, he's ex-military. And he's divorced. I was right on both things. But I didn't meet him until a month later. But literally, it was the day after I said, I just don't know, you know, if God puts someone in my life, I just don't know if I'd have time. I made time. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> I and made that's, time. <laughs> when all good things come, it's like it per God will make a way for you. you know? oh, like yeah. he, Like he, when he designs things, he, it's almost like he tries to play a joke on people. It's like, oh, you thought that wasn't mm -hmm. going to happen. But actually, it is going to happen. And like he's just <laughs> opening doors. To not only allow you to grow, but to allow you to be a blessing to others from your growth. And that is something that really I'm hearing from you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, just kind of in summary, now that you've shared your story, uh, if you could share one or two pieces of, of wisdom that you've learned through this process. The first would be to someone who is stuck in that bitterness, who just feels angry or you know, disappointed at God or, or whatever the situation is, what would you tell them? And then the second is, uh, what would you share with um, a family who is blended and maybe is going through uh, just that? 
meshing phase where it is hard and it is challenging. Um, so, and that could be the same piece of wisdom or it could be different. Um, but what would you share to each of those groups of people? I may have to ask you to repeat the second one. But anyway, um, the first one of um, what I would tell them, the person who's stuck in the bitterness, it's your choice. You're, you're choosing to be that way. Um, it's, it's a, but it's, you know, it's, it's a very easy place to fall into. You know, along with the scripture that says, you know, I learned to be content in all my circumstances. There's the scripture, and this is what God kept bringing back to me, is have the faith of God. And I think, I, I'm old-fashioned. I had to write it down. Um, Mark eleven twenty two. you know, Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he said, you know, have faith in God. That's a literal translation, though, of have the faith of God. So I had to learn to have the faith, and it is a process. How I got that was I surrounded myself with people who had that faith with me. You know, I wasn't praying every day for a husband. I wasn't praying every day to, to be, you know, have kids and think that. It got to the point where I just said, Lord, I just want that joy again. And it wasn't, it wasn't the joy of having what I thought I wanted. It was the joy of everyday life. You know, the joy finding you find in the relationships with people and being a part of their lives. You know, um, I learned a lot doing other people's weddings. You know, I learned there is so much, as you all know, since you're so recently new, 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 newlywed, um, there's a lot of joy in that day. But it doesn't stop on that day. That's just the starting point. You know, God has so much more for you too. And it's going to last. But it's, that takes, it's, a, it's a relationship. It's a relationship between you two and then the relationship between the Lord. It's that triangle. And, um, but I had the relationship with him, but I also had my own triangle, triangle of the relationship with his people. So surround yourself with the people that's going to help you find your joy. That's my wisdom, I guess you could say. So, oh, he's got something to yeah, say. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure everyone hears that because it's like there are a lot of people who they're like, if this person would just do this, I would be happy. Or if this person or this, if this was going on in my life, I would be happy. But you choosing your joy and you choosing to not only – Find joy, but you're committing your joy to God, yes. right? And yes. once you commit to God and once you commit to his joy and his purpose and yes. his will in your life, then he's going to fulfill you with that joy that you're going to be able to just give off to others. And you're yes. going to be able to just almost make it contagious, you know, and make oh, yeah. it to where it's like, here, this is what God's yes. giving me. Let me give mm -hmm. it to you, too. That's oh, yeah. so good. I can be annoyingly perky at times. <laughs> and it's because of that. You know, I... I that comes out mostly, and I go keep going back to this. That comes out mostly when I do weddings because you have so many personalities. You have so many, you have so many, I'll call just, we'll say it, personalities, okay? You have so many personalities involved, but they're all there for the same purpose. And you focus on that. And the focus needs to be what is God doing to you, through you, for you. And, you know, just love in that. So um, question two, I actually remembered. This is amazing. Um, and I didn't write it down. Um, advice, wisdom for blended families. Keep your heart open. You know, there was a, there was, there was some conflict when we first entered into, um, the relationships. And there was, there was a lot of hard times and, and you know, hurt feelings. And we, we look back at it now and we laugh, but, um, it's, you know, it's still, it's an ongoing relationship. You know, like I said, you know, our lives are a lot different with teenagers now than they were before. And so there's a lot more communication. Um, but just be open and open your heart. And for you with her family, even though there's steps involved, those are still parents. You know, I, um, like I said, I, I learned to open my heart to people that are not blood related because of the example my parents gave me with adoption. Um, I enter into my husband's families that way because his parents are divorced and have been for multiple years, but they've also remarried for multiple years to their current spouses. So, you know, I have, 
I have mother-in-law, then I have stepfather-in-law, then I have stepmother-in-law, then I have father-in-law. So I just say mom and dad, you know, that kind of thing, you know. My dad's always going to be my daddy. My mother has passed. Um, but his parents, his mom is mom. His, um, his stepfather is dad, you know. And his, his dad, next father, is pops. And then we have, um, we call her Nana Banana. She's the one. <laughs> she's the stepmother, I guess she's a not stepmother. But I know from being a step-parent that those labels are important because they acknowledge that role that they are in your life. And that's the role God put them in. You know, my parents, my, my, my sons don't call me mom. They, they go through, you know, like my Jill or Jill Jill or something like that. It's mostly just Jill. Um, and I'm fine with that because the undertone is still mom, that kind of thing. Um, and I honor their mom and I honor their stepdad too because they got married about six months before we did. So it was still, you know, they were dating, we were dating, you know, they got married, we got married, we did not, you know, it wasn't, oh, they had to, so we have to, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it just all kind of happened at the same time. You know, and it was kind of funny um, here a while back because we, we got into a fervent discussion in front of the boys. And we looked up, and the boys were kind of shocked. They're like, we've never seen you fight. Yep. And we're like, well, we disagree, but you're not with us all the time to see the disagreement. But they see more of the love, you know. But it's, to me, it's very important to honor that person, honor their, their role, honor their role. And it is, it's very different for you walking into and being a part of a family with steps. I had no idea about it. I had no idea. Um, but it's that love of, you know, that love of Christ in you that allows you to be open. And that's made me even be open to my father's relationship with his girlfriend. I'm not allowed to call her a companion because it gets the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> but, but she's a wonderful woman, and she treats my dad wonderfully. And if I had any kind of hesitation in my heart, she's not my mom. I'm not going to like her. The first time I met her, um, her and my father came to visit us here. And she went, walked up to me and she said, hello, I'm Judy. And I threw my arms open and I said, I love you, come here. And I hugged her. I think I kind of shocked her. But it's that love, like I said, you know, before, it's that love of Christ, of learn, you know, loving people. That's not in your typical role, you know, traditional. They're traditions, tradition, but you know what? It's all God. That's what it is. And you learn to love. Yeah, and God created each of those people for a purpose. Like, they're not randomly here. They're not right. randomly in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, he put all of us together the way he wanted to. That's right. So it's it's huge. And you mentioned uh, love and joy, both, you know, which are both fruits of the Spirit. And that's kind of been a, a recurring theme throughout these videos is each person has mentioned kind of a fruit of the Spirit in a way that's not on purpose, but, um, and just the importance of the Holy Spirit be bringing yes. those fruits out in your life and, and bringing that to mm -hmm. you and through you, and so that's a huge, huge role, so um, maybe you could just speak to you for a minute on how the Holy Spirit has impacted your life specifically. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of the fruits of the Spirit. The, the, ever since you asked me to do this, I've been seeking the Lord going, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? How many times do you want me to cry? I'm kidding. Um, but <laughs> what, is, what is the fruit that is most prevalent? And I would have to say patience. Um, you, with that love comes patience. It really does. And you don't realize it till you go through something and you look back and you go, wow, I was rather calm through that, wasn't I? Um, my father's always said, the bigger the things get, the calmer we get. And um, I realized later that that's the Holy Spirit because it is true, you know, a bigger, a more intense, a more serious a situation, the calmer I get. And I realized that that is the Holy Spirit going, just chill, I got it. Whether it's a realization of that at the time, you just, you, you, don't, you don't realize it. Then the Holy Spirit goes, it's okay, it's me, don't worry about it. 
Um, but that is, that's the biggest through the spirit that I see has come about through all this is patience. Patience with your, with your spouse, with your family, with your kids, with your job, with the person at Walmart that goes, why don't you have your mask on? And I go, I just put it in my purse because I'm locked out. <laughs> um, you know, that lovely experience of, oh, I could take the mask off. Um, but, yeah, you know, everyone's, everyone's in that different place. And so that patience, you know, it really is from that love is that gift of patience as well. Yeah, and I like how you explain that because – you know how people joke, they're like, don't pray for patience, you know, watch out. But we we think of it as something very challenging, and it is challenging, but you made an important point because the fruits of the Spirit are not separately in their own silos here. They're all meshed together, right? And so one is going to bring forth the other and so on and so forth. You know, it's not just like, oh, well, can't do patience, but the rest of them I got going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they right. all impact each other. That's right. And and that's an important thing because I think sometimes, and honestly, it, I would even call it a trick of the enemy of we think, oh, well, that's not that's not me. That's just not my personality or, or whatever. But if we have the Holy Spirit, then we are capable of having all of the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. So that's a great point that you made. Not individual. They all work together. Right. Just, you know, all the members of the body. They're all, they all have different jobs. They're all in different places, but they all flow together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so let's, we hit the perspective of you when you are going into a blended family. You're getting more involved into a blended family. I want to take this and put it on a different perspective for the family who is accepting the new individual how would you encourage them in that new season, in that process that they're going through? Same thing. Really? really be open. Open yeah. your heart. Open your heart to a person that you don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm, very cl- I'm very close to my sister. When we're, when we're the furthest apart geographically, the closer we are. Like right now, she lives in Florida. I don't talk to her as much as I did when she lived overseas. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just one of those things. Um, but when I started meeting all of Nick's step siblings, he has a step brother and a step sister here. He has a step brother and step sister in Arkansas. They have spouses. Um, you know, they have children. You know, want, they have blended families down there too. You know, so it's literally I look at all of my sisters as my sister. Wow. I look at all of my brothers as my brother. I don't see in-laws. I don't see steps. Were there some that we talk to and have you know a more intimate relationship with yeah we do you know that's the way with all families um but you know there's not his nephews and my nephew i have nephews i have a lot of nephews um and i have a lot of nieces i've there's a couple nieces i haven't even met because they come from a blended family that's in arkansas that we don't see very often so you know going into a situation where you don't know them but your family now you just open your heart you love them and you find a common ground Sometimes that common ground is Christ. Sometimes it's not. A lot of times it's not. (laughs) And, you know, but the Holy Spirit gives you that, you know what, you've got this in common with them. You can talk about it. You know, you can can give them advice. You can give them ideas or, you know, just talk about it, that kind of thing. With with my most recent, um, the most recent family acquisition, um, (laughs) the first time I met her, I found out that she is, was a, um, or is a, like a social director in a nursing home. So I was giving her ideas about, you know, stuff, and she's like, oh, those are really good. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. So now I send ideas to her over Facebook of stuff I've seen yeah. that they can do in nursing homes. Yeah. So we have that relationship, and it's just, you know, opening your heart to them and asking God, what do I have in common with this person? That's, that's so good because I think there's a lot of people who are just so quick to find an excuse to not try. And I think you just show a perfect example of perseverance and you really show by example how to honestly lead the way of making a future that God really wants you to have, right? And, and that is 100% submitting to Jesus and that's 100% submitting to his will in your life because it'll be like all these crazy things are happening so I'm going to choose what I want my future to look like. Mm-hmm. It's like so it's like the world is going so crazy right now nowadays where people are just trying to find some 
control, right? right? But it's almost, it's funny because the moment we continue to try to have control, it's like we're losing more and more and more. Oh, but yeah. the moment we give control to God, that's mm -hmm. when God gives us stability. Right. That's when God gives us a foundation to mm -hmm. continue to grow off of. And I just really hope, I really do hope people hear you because I'm taking this and I'm like, holy cow, like, <laughs> Like, wow, I need to send this to my buddy who's going through stuff like this or my friend who's going through stuff like this because, I mean, it's a good word. At the end of the day, it's a good word. And I really, I just want to speak encouragement in your life to keep pursuing, to keep going because you're definitely leading the way. And people are going to follow behind. And there's going to be someone who watches this video, and I can already tell someone's going to watch this video, and be like, I need to talk to her. You know, like, I need to talk, tell her what I'm going through because – People's testimonies literally impact w in ways that just a normal conversation can't, right? If someone's testimony is going to move a mountain way more than me just saying, how are you doing, you know? And then, like, but then that's going to allow us to, to continue to grow, to continue to move forward. And I, I'm blown away. I'm really, I'm so blessed by this conversation. I know other people are as well. Thank you. Having that faith of God and in God. Do you have any last comments or wisdom you would like to impart to us? <laughs> Love and patience. As people lose control in what's going on here, around, patience. It's going to be different for you than it is for someone else. Your responsibility is your relationship, not their relationship. That's great. Well, in last, this last video we did, um, like also not on purpose, we have issued a challenge at the end of these videos, but I don't have anything to issue because you've already done it, um, of opening your heart, right? And honestly, if you are stuck in that place of business, like or bitterness, like you said, or business, the business Busyness, of bitterness, that's, that yeah, to um, either way, um, to just stop, right? To just get out of it and, and to choose things that will bring that joy. So uh, you summed it up perfectly. Um, so thank you again, like Trey said so much. And um, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye.